Russians to Ukraine. Let's listen in. I want to begin by thanking President Zelensky for his passionate message this morning. I listened to it in a private residence, and uh, he was convincing and significant speech. He speaks for a people who have shown remarkable courage and strength in the face of brutal aggression. Courage and strength that's inspired not only the Ukrainians, but the entire world. Putin is inflicting appalling, appalling devastation and horror on Ukraine, bombing apartment buildings, maternity wards, hospitals. I mean, it's, it's got awful. I was speaking about this with the, our, 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 our commander behind me here. General Milley, I mean, it just is amazing. Yesterday, we saw reports that Russian forces were holding hundreds of doctors and patients hostage in the largest hospital in Mariupol. These are atrocities. They're an outrage to the world. And the world is united in our support for Ukraine and our determination to make Putin pay a very heavy price. America is leading this effort together with our allies and partners, providing enormous levels of security and humanitarian assistance that we're adding to today, and we're going to continue to do more in the days and weeks ahead. We're crippling Putin's economy with punishing sanctions. That's going to only grow more painful over time, with the entire NATO and EU behind us and many other countries. What's at stake here are the principles that the United States and the United Nations across the world stand for. It's about freedom. It's about the right of people to determine their own future. It's about making sure Ukraine never will never be a victory for Putin, no matter what advances he makes on the battlefield. The American people are answering President Zelensky's call for more help, more weapons for Ukraine to defend itself, more tools to fight Russian aggression. And that's what we're doing. In fact, we started our assistance to Ukraine before this war began, as they started to do exercises along the Ukrainian border, the Russians, starting in March of last year. We took the threat of Putin invading very seriously, and we acted on it. We sent Ukraine more security assistance last year, $650 million in weapons, including anti-air and anti-armor equipment, before the invasion, more than we had ever provided before. So when the invasion began, they already had in their hands the kinds of weapons they needed to counter Russian advances. And once the war started, we immediately rushed $350 million in additional aid to further address their needs. Hundreds of anti-air systems, thousands of anti-tank weapons, transport helicopters, armed patrol boats, and other high-mobility vehicles, radar systems that help track incoming artillery and unmanned drones, secure communications equipment and tactical gear satellite imagery and, 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 and analysis capacity. And it's clearly helped Ukraine inflict dramatic losses on Russian forces. On Saturday, my administration authorized another $200 million to keep a steady flow of weapons and ammunition moving to Ukraine. Now I'm once again using my presidential authority to activate, uh, to activate an additional security assistance to continue to help Ukraine fend off Russia's assault an additional $800 million in assistance. That brings the total of new U.S. security assistance to Ukraine to $1 billion just this week. These are the large, these are direct transfers of equipment from our Department of Defense to the Ukrainian military to help them as they fight against this invasion. And I thank the Congress for appropriating these funds. This new package on its own is going to provide unprecedented assistance to Ukraine. It includes 800 anti-aircraft systems to make sure the Ukrainian military can continue, to, can continue to stop the planes and helicopters that have been attacking their people and to defend their Ukrainian airspace. And at the request of President Zelensky, we have identified and are helping Ukraine acquire additional longer-range anti-aircraft systems and the munitions for those systems. Our new assistance package also includes 9,000 anti-armor systems. These are portable, high-accuracy, high high accurate, high shoulder-mounted missiles that the Ukrainian forces have been using with great effect to destroy invading tanks and armored vehicles. It will include 7,000 small arms, machine guns, shotguns, grenade launchers, to equip the Ukrainians, including the brave women and men who are defending their cities as civilians, and they're on the countryside as well. 
and we're and we and as well as the ammunition, artillery, and mortar rounds to go with small arms, 20 million rounds in total, 20 million rounds. And this will include drones, which which uh, demonstrates our commitment to sending our most cutting edge systems to Ukraine for its defense. And we're not doing this alone. Our allies and partners have stepped up to provide significant shipments of security assistance and will continue to help facilitate these deliveries as well. The United States and our allies and partners are fully committed to surging weapons of assistance to the Ukrainians. And more will be coming as we source additional stocks of equipment that, are all, that we're ready to transfer. Now, now, I want to be honest with you. This could be a long and difficult battle. But the American people will be steadfast in our support of the people of Ukraine in the face of Putin's immoral, unethical attacks on civilian populations. We are united in our abhorrence of Putin's depraved onslaught. And we're going to continue to have their backs as they fight for their freedom, their democracy, their very survival. And we're going to give Ukraine the arms to fight and defend themselves through all the difficult days ahead. We're going to continue to mobilize humanitarian relief to support people within Ukraine and those who have been forced to flee Ukraine. In just the past few weeks, we provided $300 million of humanitarian assistance to the people in Ukraine and in neighboring countries. Tens of thousands of tons of food, water, medicine, and other basic supplies to support the people in need. Our experts on the ground in Poland and Moldova and other neighboring countries are there to make real-time assessments of the rapidly evolving crisis to get urgently needed humanitarian supplies to the people in need when they need it. And we will support Ukraine's economy with direct financial assistance as well. And together with our allies and partners, we will keep up the pressure on Putin's crumbling economy, isolating him on the global stage. That's our goal. Make Putin pay the price, weaken his position, while strengthening the hand of the Ukrainians on the battlefield and at the negotiating table. Together with our allies and partners, we're going to stay the course, and we'll do everything we can to push for and end this tragic, unnecessary war. This is a struggle that pits the appetites of an autocrat against humankind's desire to be free. And let there be no doubt, no uncertainty, no question, America stands with the forces of freedom. We always have and we always will. I want to thank you all and God bless you. And I'm going to walk over and sign this legislation, sign this bill to allow the drawdown of those materials. And may God protect the young Ukrainians who are out there defending their country. U.S. President Joe Biden delivering remarks there on U.S. assistance to Ukraine as he prepares to sign that. And this is coming after Ukraine's leader earlier addressed the U.S. Congress asking for more support to fight off Russia. Joe Biden described the Ukrainian leader, Volodymyr Zelensky, as convincing, uh, saying that he'd made a significant speech. The U.S. president saying America would continue to have Ukraine's back in the fight against Russia. Let's bring in our White House correspondent, Kimberly Halkett. Uh, Kimberly, President Biden announcing new U.S. security assistance to Ukraine. Yes, but stopping short of what Vladimir Zelensky asked for specifically just hours ago in front of the U.S. Congress in a very emotional plea, in fact, a direct challenge to the U.S. president. It has been, at least initially, outright rejected by the U.S. president. And given the delay of the speech by the U.S. president, there was some speculation that this was a plea that was under serious consideration, but it appears for now that this has has again been rejected. The call for a no-fly zone, the call for these uh, fighter jets that are referred to as MiGs that have been on the ground in Poland that potentially could be transferred for use in Ukraine, not going to be operational, at least for now. Now, is there the possibility in the future? The U.S. president certainly has not ruled that out. He said uh, that there is the possibility for this to be done in the future. But for now, the U.S. president, very clear and very specific in what is going Going to be sent. In other words, anti-aircraft systems, anti-armor systems, small arms, and drones. Again, falling short of what was asked for by the Ukrainian leader before the U.S. Congress. How was the speech, uh, President Zelensky's speech in Congress, uh, which, as you said, was very emotional, how was it received by U.S. lawmakers? 
it was enormously well received by the U.S. Congress, both Democrats and Republicans, giving the Ukrainian leader a standing ovation in a divided Congress. This is one area where they all agree, and so that is notable. Hmm. Uh, there is growing support and growing pressure on the Biden administration to potentially support or at least consider a no-fly zone, as well as potentially these uh, MiG jets that are in Poland, uh, whether or not they could be used. And the reason that the White House is pushing back is because not only fears of potentially a catastrophic effect of a nuclear war, but more imminently that there is the potential for U.S. or NATO fighters to come in direct confrontation with Russian fighters and for the opportunity for that to escalate. And that is the greatest fear of the U.S. president right now. So in some ways, the call by Vladimir Zelensky was for him to be a leader of the world and to bring about peace. Some might argue that's exactly what he's doing, is resisting the temptation to see this escalate in order to bring about peace, to preserve peace. But again, in the short term, this is not what the Ukrainian leader was hoping for. Kimberly Halkett at the White House, thank you very much for that. And we'll have more.